Hey everybody, I'm Jess. This is Happy Hour Hangout. Happy Wednesday to you all. How is it going out there? Hello to Michelle and to James and anyone else in the chat. Good to see you here. Uh, I'm excited to be getting back to doing some games with you all in the chat. Today we're going to be playing Welcome to Dino World. We're going to be playing the Danger Mode version, which has some extra special content to go with it. So I'm really excited to have you all here and join me. Um, I did play this, oh gosh, I can't remember. Um, probably one of my first early streams, uh, I did the Light Mode version. Um, and so this one has some extra content to go along with it, some extra objectives and things like that. Hey Gus, good to see you in here. Thanks for stopping by. So this is going to be a, a fun experience. If you would like to play along, or if you wanna just catch the VOD, I will put a link in the chat for you to uh, play with me if you would like to. Um, the Alley Cat Games website has a nice little section for some of their games to do remote play. So we are going to be playing the danger mode of Welcome to Dino World. So if you would like to play along with me, there are links in the chat now for you to get your player sheets and um, play along. This game has um, objectives and things that you will be trying to achieve, kind of like in Welcome To, um, where first person to achieve those will get those points, and then some uh, later on, some folks will get them um, smaller scores and things of that nature. But in this, since I'm going to be doing it remotely, and since several of you will probably be playing along, I have little tokens that I'm going to mark on those objectives to achieve them so I won't remove the card from the screen. You can still have the cards visible uh, to play along. So if I achieve those goals, I'll just put my little token on there and then you can see um, those other objectives and things too. So yeah, this game is a roll and write from Alley Cat Games. They have done other games like Chocolate Factory and Dice Hospital, um, Tungaroo, uh, the new uh, Kickstarter that just got successfully funded, Tinner's Trail. So they are doing a lot of great things, a lot of good games. Um, they are based out of the UK. So uh, it is one of those games that it might be difficult to get here in the States, but I am so glad that they have these links to do remote play with everyone so you can all play along um, at your leisure or if you want to play now you can play now so that's um, really a lot of fun. We are going to be basically drawing a dino park. We're building pens, we're going to be building different facilities and drawing pathways and things but in the danger mode there is uh, generators that you will have to draw as well in those dino pens and some of them can malfunction. So if there are malfunctions, then each of your dino pens will take damage. And if you have a uh, damage that exceeds the number of squares in a certain dino pen, then those dinosaurs break out and cause more damage. And so it can escalate very, very fast. Um, so, but it's all dependent upon the die rolls and how you place your um, security, and, or not place your security, but place your pens and your generators and how you how you um, manage your park so uh, there's going to be a lot to it this game can run fairly long so I'm thinking probably about 90 minutes for us to play this game there's going to be some interesting decisions that you'll have to make um, but I am looking forward it's one of those kind of um, more uh, thought-provoking roll and write games. It's not just take a number and draw something. It's take a number, but think about what you want to draw because there's several different options that you can draw based upon the die rolls um, that could alter future decisions that you make. So anyway, let us get right down to it because there's going to be a lot of explanation, a lot of things going on here. So um, yeah, we'll just get right to the table view. 
All right, so here we are. This is Welcome to Dino World Danger Mode. So as you see, you have our player sheets here. The player sheets that you will get in the game if you actually have a physical copy of the game, they will have light mode and danger mode. So we are going to be playing danger mode. So make sure you have the correct player sheet because there is some different symbology that you're going to be playing based upon this sheet. There are uh, facility cards here. Those are chosen randomly for every game. And then you have your visitor cards, which are your objectives that you can get bonus points similar to Welcome to, first per person to obtain those will get those victory points. But like I said earlier, I will leave them out on the table and mark them with a little token if I achieve those as well. And then a special bonus, we get the public objective cards here. Those can be achieved um, by any player. First player will receive 12 points to achieve those cards and then second and secondary players will get the seven point victory card bonus. So how this is going to work is there are three dice that I'm going to roll. They're just basic D6, nothing special, nothing fancy. Going to be three dice and then we are going to write them down here into our dice tracker. We're going to be playing a total of eight rounds in this game. Now you have the option with those three dice to do three different things. You can either build a dino pen based upon the number that is seen here, or you can build a pathway that is connected to a current pathway on your player sheet, or you can build a facility. And the facilities are, are constructed based upon whatever the number value is on the die. Now you can add together the die values that you see here, you can. So let's say if this is our first roll and we've got a three, we've got a one, and we've got another one. You can combine, you combine all three if you want and take a five, an action that dictates a five, or you can take an action that dictates for a three, a one and a one, or you can combine the two ones together to make a two. Uh, either way, you will be able to utilize the dice however you see fit, according to your park, with the, just the exception of knowing you can only draw a dino pen once per round, a pathway, a, co a collection of pathways once per round, or a facility once per round and a round is utilizing the three dice, okay? So I could not draw a dino pen of a three and then a dino pen of a one. I could not do that on this turn. I have to choose only to draw one dino pen and then I would do either a facility or a pathway for those other two dice. All right, so how we're going to do this, is I'm gonna roll the dice, we're gonna write them down, we're gonna choose what our actions are, draw out, draw out our park action. So placing a pen, drawing a pathway, writing a facility. Then we are going to check malfunction. Now, every time you draw a dinosaur pen, you will be marking down on this threat tracker here. Threat tracker is the possibility of things going wrong in your park. Um, there's a threat tracker and then there's also a security track here on the bottom. For every dinosaur pen that you draw, you will mark threat based upon the type of dinosaur it is. For herbivores, they are the ones that have the little leaf symbol. They will be, they take one threat for every type of that dinosaur you draw. So one threat would be marked here. For carnivores, that's the little red splotch, you will take two, two threat for them. Now you're saying, okay, Jess, so you increase threat, but then how do I increase my security? Because there's obviously a security track. Well, here on the bottom, we have those. They are marked um, and incrementing victory point numbers. So for the less amount of security you take, the more victory points you can gain at the end of the game. Um, but to increase your security, you will be able to take one of these two actions. Either you can take a free action during a round and just increase your security by one point, which means you would just tick off the, uh, the check off the furthest to the left box, or you can sacrifice a die and check two boxes on your, on your security track. 
So once that once you do that and you have your threat and your security, we will check for malfunction. Malfunction works in this way. It will take the difference of your threat minus your security. So if I had three threat here and only one security, the difference would be two. And then I would roll one of these dice and add that value as well, and that would be my total threat. So if I roll the die here for malfunction, I had a four, so I had three secure, three threat minus one security, that's two, two threat plus four of a total of six threat. Now, if I have six threat, I need to look at this tracker of malfunctions here. For every malfunction that is six or higher, the generators that have generators of four power to them will malfunction. Now let me let me remind you that our generators that you draw can have up to four power power outlets connecting to pens. So you see here that's the little lightning bolts. Um, so for this uh, compi, you would need only one uh, power outlet to it from a generator whereas the T-Rex needs three power outlets from a generator. So you can draw a generator as a one square box for free. It does not count for any um, die values. And how you would do that is you would draw just a little kind of curved line. So I could do two here and two here, connecting to pens for a total of four. So for if I, since I rolled a six on my threat tracker for every generator that has four outlets being used, that will malfunction. So let's say I've got my T-Rex pen. I've got a T-Rex pen here. He requires three. I'll erase one over here. And I've got my compi pen over here. So I got a T-Rex and a compi, and this is a one generator power outlet and then the T-Rex takes three, so I have three here. So this generator total has four there. Those T-Rexes run a lot of hair dryers. Yes, they do, Gus. So what's gonna happen is for that generator, since I rolled a six on my malfunction track, this generator will malfunction because all four power outlets were being used. Then what's going to happen is for every every dinosaur pen that the generator is connected to, I will cross off an X indicating that the dinosaur pen took a damage. Now let's say in future turns, another six gets rolled for malfunction and I have to look here. The compi pen is now fully damaged, which means the compi actually breaks out and will attack every connecting every connecting dinosaur pen adjacent to where it currently is. So it would attack this one and then another damage would be taken. So there's a damage already for the generator and then another damage for the compi breaking out and running a havoc, wreaking havoc. So things to remember are to try to keep your security so that threat level doesn't exceed your security level. However, there are some benefits, like here we have our research lab uh, cards that can do some um, preventative measures for you. So let's talk about those. Uh, in the danger mode, you have research labs and there are uh, different cards that will be randomly drawn as well as the visitor objective cards and the public objectives and et cetera, et cetera, that will give you special abilities to be used throughout the game. Now the X lab card can be used three times throughout the game. The Y lab card can be used twice and the Z lab card can be used only once. Uh, and I will show you what these are. So in this one that I randomly drew, the X research lab says that you can add a new entrance to your park. An entrance is one of these little four way crossroads at the border of a park. So you can draw, you can draw, fill in an empty square here if you wanted to, empty square here if you wanted to, empty square up here, because you have it utilized three times to draw those. Uh, you are not restricted to drawing only one re research per round. You can draw as many as you have available to you in a round. So if there are, 
excuse me, if there are some benefits for you to combo them up, then go ahead and do so. But once you utilize a research lab card, make sure you mark it on your player sheet to know that you only have a limited supply of those uses. Next, we have the Y research lab card, which allows you to adjust a die result by up to two values or two dice by up to one value each. This is helpful because in the light mode, um, you actually have that ability in your research instead. So here gave you the ability to adjust pit values by one, whereas this Y lab allows you to do that by two. So this is kind of an added benefit for you, but you can only utilize it twice in the game. So that's something to be mindful of. And then finally, the Z lab is the mad scientist. You immediately score points equal to double the difference between your threat and your security. So let's say I had, like for my example earlier, I had three threat, one security. So the difference between my threat and my security is two. So I would score double those points. So I would get four points for there for my mad scientist. Now I would write that here in the miscellaneous section, I would get four points at the end of the game. All right, so that's what these research labs do. Um, there is a lot of information, friends, so please feel free to uh, stop me and ask any questions that you have. Um, but I will go ahead and describe some of the research facilities, the public objectives, and then we can get started. Because like I said, this game can be quite uh, a long time to play. So making those choices can be, um, can, <laughs> can take some time to think about. So, all right. Uh, so next we have the, um, Oh yeah, so we have our security. We did our security and our threat and things too. Um, we have the claiming visitors. So that's part three of our phase. So the first phase is drawing, is constructing something, either a pen, a pathway, a, 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 a facility of some kind using the combination of dice that are given. We check for malfunction, which is the difference between your threat and your security plus a die value. And then finally, we claim visitors. Now these are our visitor cards. And like I said, it's first come first serve, but those folks that can claim them, I will leave them here on the table so you can see them as you're playing at home. Um, and then for myself, if I will, uh, if I will claim a, uh, a, a visitor card, I will mark it with one of my little tokens here. <laughs> I took these from Draftosaurus, so I will have those for the tokens. So this 10.1 here says, have a combination of at least five facilities uh, in your park. This one says, completely surrounded the lake, including diagonal corners by either pens, facilities, and up to two pathways. This one here says have at least one T-Rex pen and one Brachiosaurus pen. This one here says have at least two Protoceratops pens, four or more pathways away from all entrances. Pathways in this game, how they determine it is a, a square. So at least four squares away from where the Proto pen would be. This one says both entrance pathways lead up to the lake. Um, I would also take that as if you built another side entrance, I would, I would have that also included in there. So if you have at least two entry pathways leading up to the lake, that would give you the four point bonus. And then finally, we have at least three power generators touching each other. So in kind of a combination, like here it shows like an L shape there. Uh, so those are visitor cards. Those would be scored down in the claimed visitor section of your player sheet there. And then finally, we have our two public objectives, which are 12 and seven points respectively, 12 points for achieving it first, and then seven points for those folks afterward. 
Uh, this first one is have six, at least six or more, six or more uh, rectangular pens uh, with one dimension must it be two, two squares of max two squares. Um, this is also including or excluding power generators. So let's say I've got my T-Rex pen. Da, 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 for my example here. And then I've got my power generator here. Do, do, do. And then I've got a Brachiosaurus pen, a Brachiosaurus pen somewhere up here. Da, 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 da. My Brachiosaurus pen. Now, Brachiosaurus is a seven square, but it needs a power generator. So it's going to be included with the power generator here. So this is essentially a rectangle now because it includes the power generator, whereas this T-Rex is a rectangle as is without the power generator. So the public objective is saying you can include the power generator into your rectangular shape to claim that bonus, or you, can, you don't have to. So it, it says included or excluded if you want. So that's what they mean by that. And I am going to draw dinos, friends. Don't you worry. That's one of the bonuses about playing this game <laughs> is you can make little dino scribbles. So I'm just, I just wrote the letters here so you can kind of see uh, for the examples, but I will be taking my time and drawing out my dinosaurs. It won't be very pretty. I am only as artistic as I choose to be, <laughs> but I hope you all uh, can can forgive me on my quick examples here so you can all understand the rules. And then finally, this one, this public objective is pass through 15 or more squares in the park. So your pathways have to be through at least 15 squares in your park. Okay, I'm sure there are probably going to be questions. Totally fine if you want to ask them now or ask them while I'm playing throughout the game. But I am going to be, oh, I forgot to talk about the facilities. Okay, so facilities are, are also different types that you can be constructing here when you allocate a die value to something uh, to draw. You can draw a facility. Now the facilities here are also random cards that get drawn at the beginning of the game and they are determined based upon the die values that you use will determine which type of facility you can draw. So this one for the triangle facility, it has to be a die value of one, two, or three, and that is the gift shop. And the gift shop will give you, must be connected to a pathway, so meaning I have to draw my little gift shop like here, I can't draw it way out here because there's no pathway connecting to that gift shop. For every square away from the entrance, you will get that many points. Uh, you will get my, like lower point values. So the closer you are to an entrance, the more points you will get. So if you are one square away from an entrance, you get three points. If you are two squares away, you get two points. If you get three or more squares away, you only get one point. All right, but again, it must be connected to a pathway. So if I had if I had the a gift shop here, and let's say I connected here, so this gift shop would give me three points, whereas this gift shop will give me one because there's three squares away from the main entrance there. Okay, so that is the triangle facilities. The circle facilities are for a value of four, five, or six. They do not need to be connected to a pathway, but they must be next to a dino pen. Um, and you will get, we will gain points based upon half of your threat level rounded down. Now the facilities will score at the end of the game. Um, all of your points will be scored at the end of the game. So, but as you're collecting them, you could increase how many points you get for the facilities throughout the game. So let's say I've got my, my Brocky over here, my Brachiosaurus, it's got its generator, it's got doot doot, and then I want to draw a I want to draw a circle facility. 
Now it has to be next to a pen. So again, I couldn't draw my facility way down here. The circle facilities must be next to and a pen. Um, when it says next to, it means orthogonally adjacent. So north, south, east, west to where you currently are. Um, yep, and so those score at the end. And oh, finally, for the pathways, that's one thing to remember. Uh, pathways here can be drawn based upon the number of pips that you have on a die. So let's say I wanted to draw pathways of three and one. I can draw, I can draw pathways that is, I can draw a four-way crossroads for the three, or I can choose to do a, a T shape for two pips, and then an L shape for one pip, which is a total of three. So you can do any combination of these as long as you have pips available to do so. So you're not restricted to just drawing only a three pip shape. You can break it down and do several different types of pathways up to the sum of the pips that you have showing on your die. Um, and then you can combine, you can combine for four as well if you wanted to combine some of these other shapes to make a T shape if you don't have a three available to you and all that kind of thing. You can also, if I hadn't mentioned it before, I will mention it now, you can combine dice together. So here I can combine this to make a four and then utilize this four by itself. I can do three separate actions with those three dice. I can combine all three of them and have an eight, um, which helps for drawing either a Brachiosaurus or a T-Rex pen, um, and, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot here, but let's get down to playing, shall we? And like I said, if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. I will also um, be kind of talking out my turns as well. So if you wanna be playing this on the VOD, you can just watch what I do and then maybe play on your own later on. So let's get down to it. All right, our first set of dice, we have our, a five, a two, and a three. So we are going to write this here on our dice tracker. We have a five, a two, and a three. So remember, we can draw some pens. Uh, hi, Dead Last again. I am not playing against a solo. I am playing this as... Um, this is set for anyone to play. Uh, normally in a multiplayer game, these visitor cards would be set in between two players. So this set would be to a player on my left, and then this set would be to a player on my right. But for the sake of understanding the mechanics, I am essentially having it play for like a three player, for like a three player game. So you can have these objectives in front of you. So yes, so feel free to um, play along if you want to. There is a link uh, further up in the chat. Um, but yes, and so these objective cards, these visitor objective cards are, uh, once they are claimed, they are claimed because normally it's a 1v1 player interaction. But I'm going to leave them up so you all can kind of see what the point values are. And then I will just put the uh, my little token, my little dino token, if I claim that there. But good question. All right, so I have some options now. Uh, also looking at some of these public objectives. Um, oh, and one thing to remember, you must have your dino pen be connected to a pathway somewhere. So one of the squares of your dino pen must be connected to a path. So at the moment, I am restricted to these areas here to draw my dino pen unless I decide to draw a pathway further out to bring it further out into my park. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, knowing that we need some T-Rexes and some Brockies, um, I am going to combine I'm going to combine my two and my five to make a seven because it is required 
for the Brachiosaurus to have a seven um, uh, as a pip value. So to draw that, I would need seven squares. So I'm going to draw up here. I'm going to do this here. Uh, what am I going to, how am I going to draw this? Because I want to utilize as much as possible with my pathways, although I don't want to limit myself to blocking out space, so I have to make sure I draw some paths. So I will have my Brocky here. Ba -ba -da -ba. Da -da -da -da. Da 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 da. Okay, that didn't turn out too bad. I will put a B for Brachiosaurus. It needs a power generator, so I will draw my power generator here. Check off that I used a power generator. It needs two, so I'm going to do a one, two there. So this power generator still has two outlets that I can use for other future pens, but for now I can. So I have used my five and my two, so I have a three remaining. So I have done a pen action, a drawing a dino pen, so I can't draw another one on this turn. Uh, I could draw either a pathway or a facility next. So I think what I'm gonna do is possibly draw a facility. Uh, I don't know, no. Let's see. Um, let's draw Let's draw some pathways. So let us draw here. That's a one pip value. And then do a little L here. And then I will do a straight here. So that's three. So. A single straight line is a one pip, and then an L is also a one pip. So I essentially had three pips, so one, two, three. There we go. Now, I have to draw my threat. I forgot to do that, so let's do that for my threat, because I did a Brachiosaurus pen, so that is one threat there. Uh, I could take a free action and give myself security, which is fine. Uh, that's just zero victory points. Um, one thing I might not have mentioned, but every security point box that you have unchecked, you add up the total number of victory points indicated in those boxes. You sum them up and those are victory points that you get at the end of the game. So right now, these first two boxes say zero points in them. So using that is fine. So, okay, so I did all of my actions. I utilized all of my dice, so the construction phase is done. Now we're going to check malfunction. So one, one minus one is zero, so I'm pretty set, and unless I roll a six, uh, but let's see what happens. I rolled a one. Okay, so nothing malfunctions, because nothing is a value of six or higher, uh, so everything is okay and the claiming of visitors phase. So do I have anything for any of these cards? I do not yet. So we move on to the next round, round two. Okay, so we've got a two, a two, and a five, two, two, and five. Okay, so, and I did not use any of the research labs. Those can be used at any time. 
Um, yes, Michelle, thank you for saying welcome in. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and your little emoji. Oh my goodness. Oh, is that new, Michelle? That is so cute. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okie doke. So I did not use any of those yet. Um, let's see, two, two, and five. I can draw if I wanted to. Ooh, a five, I can get a Stegosaurus pen. Stegosaurus pen is nice. Uh, let's see. Stegosaurus. Yeah, with my five, I will do that here. Do, 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 do. And time to draw my steggy. S for Stegosaurus. It needs one power. So I will take that from this generator. Um and do that there. All right, now I've got two twos. I will combine those two twos to make a four, so I will draw a circle facility here because it has to be next to a dino pen. So I will do that there, and that is everything. Okay, yep, so I added my threat because the Stegosaurus is a herbivore, so it only costs one threat on my threat track. Um, I can do the free action if I want to, so why not take the free action? And we will roll for malfunction. It's a four. 4 plus 0 is still 4, which is less than 6, so I am A-OK -okay on that. Uh, have I claimed any visitors yet? Uh, the lake being completely surrounded, it's not quite yet. Five facilities, I only have one. A T-Rex and a Brocky pen, not yet. I probably will try to achieve that next round. Two or more proto-pens, four or more paths away. Uh, I will need to kind of utilize this space. I probably will draw another entrance um, to do that. Three power generators touching. I only have one in use at the moment and both pathways leading up to the lake. So currently I have one that's getting there to the lake and then I will probably draw another entrance somewhere down here or we'll see. We shall see. Okay. But we are moving into round three. All right. We have got a six, a three, and another three. Six, three, and three. So here we go. Six, three, and three. Hmm. All right. T Rex. That might be good. So I will actually use that research lab to make this six into a seven so I can draw my um, T Rex pen. And look how I'm gonna do this, folks. Didn't know you can do this, but you can. Uh, 
So that is six squares, one, two, three, four, five, six there. <laughs> uh, all right, and I gotta get my T-Rex here. So, how am I gonna draw Mr. T-Rex? He's got a large melon. He's got a large melon. And kind of a skinny body. Mrawr. He's got his legs down here and his tiny little arms there. T-Rex. Rawr. Okay, this one needs a generator. So... <laughs> yeah, feel free to chat it up, friends. Don't mind me. Uh, it's all a safe space here, so feel free to chat it up. Um, okay, so I'm going to do... Do my generator up here actually. Ba -ba -da -ba. Do, do, do. Another generator. It's going to cost me three. One, two, three. For that. Yep, for that one. And because I drew a T Rex, it's two threat. Perfect. Yeah, James, hope your meeting does go well, my friend. Okay, so I did that. Now I'm going to draw. Ooh, okay. I've got some pathways. Yes, I will draw another entrance here. Da, 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 da. Okay. So that does not count as taking these. That's a research action, which is separate from taking a uh, die action. So I still have the two threes to do. Um, what shall I do with my two threes? Let's do, let's put a gift shop somewhere. Where's a good spot for a gift shop, huh? Maybe over here? Let's try that. Over there for a gift shop. And then I will draw, draw some more pathways. Let's do a two. A two for there, and then let's do a straight line there for three. Or no, I'm gonna leave it as two. I don't have to use all the pips, uh, just up to the three pips. So I will do that. Okay. Always have guests exit through the gift shop. Yes, that was my thought too. All right, so I did that, make sure he's powered, he's got three. My Steggy's got three, I've got my pathways, did the gift shop, and we are good to go. Checking threat now. Does it sell those dino grabby sticks? <laughs> yep, that's true. Gotta grab one of those dino things on the way out. So, we have got two more threat, and no additional security. So, I am at two, and then I'm gonna roll this die here. Ooh, a four, so I am currently at six. So six tells me for every uh, four outlet generator um, that will malfunction. This one has three power outlets in use, and this one has three power outlets in use, so I am okay. Ooh, maybe it sells Draftosaurus. 
Yeah, <laughs> maybe it does. We shall see. So I am A-OK -okay on malfunction because um, I don't have power generators with four outlets in use. Uh, do the dinos play draft a sapien at night while the park is closed? Ooh, good question. I have not been in a dino park at night to actually ask them, although I don't speak dinosaur. So yeah, we will, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. That is, uh, I, we'll see. What am I saying? We'll see. I don't know. It's not like I'm going to inherit some dino speaking abilities, <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay, so malfunction was fine, and now I'm going to claim some visitors. Uh, do I have five facilities mixed of any type? I do not. I only have one facility. Is the lake completely surrounded? Not yet. Do I have a T-Rex and a Brachiosaurus pen? Yes, I do. So I will get six points there. So I'm going to mark my, my little dino over here to indicate I have claimed that bonus. But if you are playing at home, um... You can also, if you've claimed it on a previous round, just know that you have those six bonus points. Um, I will mark that here in the claimed visitor section and update it as I claim more things. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe Soma can translate, yeah. They watched the 90s show Dinosaurs After Hours. Oh my gosh! Oh, what a throwback, Dead Last. Oh my gosh. That show was oddly wonderful. Ah, uh, I remember watching that. Wow, that is definitely a throwback. Okay, any proto pens? I do not have any proto pens. Any power generators? Three of them touching? No, I do not. And both paths lead to the lake. Not yet. Okay, so that was a that was a decent round. Oh man. Okay, here we go. So we've got one, a six, and a two. One, six, and two. Okay, what to do? I need help with that reference. What is it? Oh my gosh, okay. So, um, Gus, I don't know what generation would be considered. Is that like for us millennials, I guess? For myself as a millennial or Gen Z or I don't know. Anyway, a kid of the 90s. It was um, similar to, it was a, a show similar to like ALF where the main characters were like puppets and things too. But there was, it was a dinosaur family and they had interactions as like, you know, anapromorphic basically dinosaurs. Now they go through family conflict and all this stuff. Well, they had a baby dinosaur that was quoted for saying like, knock the mama or whatever. <laughs> uh, hey, Panda, I'm explaining the 90s show Dinosaurs, if you ever watched it. Um, yeah. Nope, that's seen the, let's see. I watched it a little bit. Have you seen the music video using them to hypnotize by B Notorious B.I.G.? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, it was just this dino family um, and all the shenanigans of, you know, family conflict and all this kind of stuff. But, uh, oh my gosh, yes, Panda loves that show. Not the mama. <laughs> so the baby dinosaur was notorious for saying this phrase, not the mama, and throwing things and just being a toddler, but as a baby. Um, and so, yeah, so it kind of had like that similar vein of like, of Alf, but there were no like humans in it, so there were no like human actors in it. Um, but yeah, I had kind of that like pop popular thing. All right, now you have vague memories. Okay, yeah, I'm the baby. That's right. Yeah. So um, it was around the same time, also as like the earlier version of Land of the Lost. Um, I remember also watching that show and Harry and the Hendersons around that time too. Um, yeah, oh gosh, 90s throwback shows. But yeah, Dinosaurs Dinosaurs was one of those. Um, I forgot, it was like on ABC, I think. So it was like, it was like primetime dinner TV that like, 
you know, if people weren't watching Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, I guess, um, they would be watching this. So anyway, yeah, that's a, that's a fun throwback, dead last. Thanks for that. Panda, how are you? How are you, my friend? I am currently going through, uh, welcome to Dino World Danger Mode. Um, doing not too bad. My dinos are currently staying inside their pens, thankfully. Um, so now I am trying to see what to do about these die rolls. <sighs> Music video is good. If you're not a rap fan, you may not be as big on it, but the editing on it is great. Yeah, yeah. Trying to stay cool. Ooh, I have heard it's going to get warm in California. So, yeah. Um, stay cool. Maybe maybe uh, have a nice iced beverage of some kind. I put some uh, ice cubes in my water today. Currently, I'm drinking a sparkling water, um, which is starting to warm up because it's been sitting out for a bit. But, um, yeah. So, hope you are doing well, my friend. I uh, hope all of you are doing well, by the way. Not just Panda, but everyone here in the chat. I hope you all are doing well. Okie doke. Um, ooh, some fried rice. Nice. Uh, we made homemade pad thai a couple of days ago, a couple nights ago. That came out really good. We threw it all in the Instapot. It was delish. So what type of fried rice are you making, Panda? Are you doing shrimp fried rice? Are you doing pork? Are you putting any meat in it? Is it just going to be a veggie stir fry? Uh, let us know. We are all, I for one am all about food talk on here. So, okay, let's get down to business here. I need to draw some more facilities, facilities and get some more pathways leading up to the lake. So shall I do that? Yeah, I think I shall. Oh, I can do that with the two. I will take that two and do bloop, bloop. And bloop, bloop. Yeah, okay. So I did a pathway draw. Now I can draw a dino and a facility. Ooh, that's pretty awesome. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to get this one because I keep have to draw more entrances to help with that. So I don't know if drawing a proto would be beneficial for me. I could draw a Velociraptor. Velociraptor pen, that's cool. Uh, but I also need some more facilities. Da da da, da 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 da. Da, 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 da. I don't know why I'm singing that song. I don't even know what song it's supposed to be. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe I can draw. So I have a one and a six that I can do. Um, So I can do, but I need to get some generators next to each other, orthogonally adjacent. So I will need to, if I drew something here, mm, aha, I could do something here with the six, I could do a Velociraptor. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll do Velociraptor like this, make it a nice little L shape. Ba -ba -da, like that. 
I'll put another generator here because it'll be orthogonally adjacent. And the Velociraptor needs two, so it will go bloop, sh bloop. This is a V for Velociraptor. And the Velociraptor look like little danger noodles. Danger noodles. Danger noodle. All right, it's got a small little head. And it's got a long whippy tail. Bloop. There we go. Danger Noodle. All right, so I got that. That's generated. That's powered. Um, although, no, wait. I should, I should put it down this way so I can have one pathway. Whoops. Oh, and if I didn't mention it before, friends, once you draw a pen, you cannot redraw it on a future round. So once it's in, it's in. So I'm gonna draw that so I have this pathway available to draw more stuff up here. All right, danger noodle. Then I'm gonna use that last one to increase my security by two because I just increased my threat by two check got a double check okay so the bronte is one threat the steggy is another threat so that's two total t-rex is two so that's four total and a velociraptor is two so that's six total one two three four five six okay so then i sacrifice this other die to cross off two boxes on my security track and that should be everything okay I did that, I did that. I drew my pathways, I drew a facility. And now we're checking malfunction. So currently I'm at two plus two is four, which does not hit any of the thresholds here. So I am a-okay and claiming visitors. All right, did I have five facilities? No, I only have two right now. Is the lake completely surrounded by pens, facilities, and two pathways? Yes, it is. So I have that one for 10 more points. So my visitor claim is now 16 total points. Do I have proto pens? No, I do not. Do I have both entrances leading into the lake? Uh, I only have one leading into the lake because that T-Rex pen blocks it. So I essentially blocked myself from getting this objective, but that's okay. And three power generators. No, but I am working on it. If I can get that up there, I am working on it. Alrighty, so that's all the visitors I am claiming. That is round four. We are halfway through, friends. Like I said, this game can be quite long. There could be some difficult decisions to make. But it seems to be going A-OK. -okay. If I can get my thread up just slightly more, I will utilize the Z Research Lab and get myself double points. But for now, I kind of want to wait. So here we go. We've got a four a three and another three. Four, three, and three. Hmm. So this area here is prime for building, building some pens. I could do, what is a four? A four it could be a Velociraptor. I could do another Velociraptor there. Um, or I could add plus two to make a six. Oh, but that, I need seven or more there. Ooh, okay. 
actually, I could add or I could add two of them together and make a seven. So then I would have, then I would have the Brachiosaurus there. So Brachiosaurus is seven squares. Yeah, I could do that. Watch out for the dinosaurs. Hey, Fritchitz, how's it going? Good evening to you. Um, have you played this? This is danger mode of Welcome to Dino World. Um, we've got some extra threat coming. So, yeah, let's see how, oh, goodness me. I want to put another, I want to put another T-Rex in. Yeah, because then, then I'll increase my threat. And then I increase my threat and then hopefully get some double points here. Okay. Only the once. Okay. Did you play on danger mode or did you play on the light mode? Which is the which is the other player sheet on there? Did you play with these nice research lab cards? Um yeah, okay, so I'm going to draw, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw my T-Rex. So I'm combining these two die together, friends. I'm combining these two die together to draw a T-Rex pen because a T-Rex pen is six squares. So it's going to go like this, do, 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 like that. And I'm going to put a generator here because it needs three. So I'm going to go one, two, three for that generator. And my T-Rex got a large noggin and tiny little arms. Rawr. Rawr. Okay. That's a T for the T-Rex. He's got three which caused two, two more threat. And so that's my T-Rex pen. I am going to draw a, okay, so I combined those two. Da, 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 da. Now I have my three, which I'm going to increase by one pip to make it a four so I can draw this research right there because it has to be next to a pen. So I will do that. So I have three now. I have three facilities there. Okay, I did not draw any pathways this time around, but it will. Uh, don't remember, it looks like a duck. Thank you, thank you so much. It's a dangerous duck. I've got my little danger noodle here. I've got a, a terrifying hedgehog. Um, and then I've got some sort of like slug and like combination of something. But I'm going to call them all dinosaurs because that's what this game is about. It's not calling it's not drawing random animals. It's a dino park. So these are all dinosaurs, friends. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so there we go. So I utilize all of my dice. I have done all of the things. Uh, so I got all my threat up. Now we're checking for malfunction. So currently I am at four plus two is a six. So everyone that has a four outlet utilizing will malfunction. This one has three, this one has three, this one has two, and this one has three. So I am safe. So no malfunctions will occur here. I feel like I'm planning this a little bit better than what I did when I played the other night. Um, my my dinosaurs are, are keeping, keeping under wraps, are being kept under wraps, I should say. 
Okay, now do I claim any visitors? Do I have five facilities? No, I only have three. I already have this claimed, I already have this claimed. Did not do any proto pens, but I did do my power generators, three of them touching orthogonally. Boom, boom, boom. So that will give me four. So I will put my little token here. So that is a total of 20 points so far on my claims visitors. There. Okay, yeah. We will still be playing um, crisscross friends, so stick around for that, don't worry. The tournament is still underway. I will put in the chat the uh, links for it, so if you wanna play along later on, you still can. And if you want to play this game, um, Welcome to Dino World Danger Mode, I also have the link in the chat for the um, website for Alley Cat that has has a list of different remote playing games that they can play. So, all right, not a problem, friend. Yes, have a, have a good moment doing your chores, hanging up your laundry. <laughs> I was doing laundry today as well. Must be laundry day. All right, moving on, round five. Okay, we have a two, a five, and a two. Two, five, two. Two, five, two. Okay. Okay, so I've already used all of those. Do I wanna do this? I think I do. So immediate score, double the difference from my threat and my security. So currently my security is at, or my threat is at four. Uh, four, oh no. The difference between my threat and my security. So I have two, four, six, eight. Eight threat, four security, which is a total of four. <laughs> uh, and then score points equal to double the difference. Uh, so four times two is eight. So I will put eight in miscellaneous down here. So I will claim Z there, give myself eight bonus points there. And remember friends, you can use your research, the labs at any time throughout the game. They don't have to be at the beginning of a round. They don't have to be at the end of a round, just wherever you see fit. Um, but once you utilize those research labs, make sure you cross them off here on your player sheet so that you can um, uh, know what your limits are because you are limited to how many times you can use it for the game. Okay, I need some more facilities. So I need to draw at least two more facilities to get here. Another gift shop, friends. And I need to draw some more pathways. So I am actually, ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna do a proto pen from an entrance. So that would be one, two, three, four. I could do that and draw a proto pen here. It does not need, oh, two proto pens. Oh, that's difficult. Okay. Do I want to utilize only drawing protos now for the rest of the game? I mean, I could. It's not... I mean, it's not super helpful, but I could. So... So I would need a four of some kind. So I can take this two and increase it to make it a four. So I can draw a four path. So I would just draw three actually. Okay. Oh, I can't use this anymore. Darn it, darn it, I can't because I already used all of my research. Darn it, okay. So I will need to, hmm.
yeah, kids, I can't, for my proto pen, I have to make it four pathways away. Oh, that's harsh. Okay. Well, I will, I guess I will use a five then. Um, Cause if I draw my proto pen up here, I can do one, two, and then three. So that would be one, two, three, four squares away from an entrance. So that would work. Okay. So I did utilize my five, even though I didn't use all of the pips. Um, yeah, that's a bummer. But then I'm gonna take this two and draw my little proto. P for proto. That is a herbivore, so it will cost one threat. And so I did the five and the two. Uh, okay. Now I have a two to draw another. I can draw, yeah, I'll draw a gift shop here. That'll be three, four facilities there. Yep, by the entrance, there we go. Okay, so I drew my pathways, did my dino part pen, and I did a facility. So those are the three actions I can do. Utilized all of my dice. Now we're rolling for malfunction. I have five, so I have a feeling something might be, might be happening. Five, oof, plus four. Ooh, that's dangerous. Okay, so this means for a nine plus every generator that I have in play, oh, I did not mark, I have four generators in play, whoops. Every generator in play is going to malfunction, <laughs> which means that every generator that is in use right now, either four outlet, three outlet, two outlet, or one outlet will be malfunctioning. What that means is whatever generator is currently doing, <laughs> currently powering a, a dinosaur pen, it will malfunction and cause damage to the pens that it's generating. So currently this one is generating my Bronte pen and my Steggy pen, so this one will cause a damage here and cause a damage here, bummer summer. This one is gonna cause a damage to my T-Rex pen, so I'm gonna cause an X there. This one for my Velociraptor is an X there, and for my T-Rex pen up here for this generator. Now, it's not super great, but if I had more malfunctioning so that all of the pen is uh, damaged, then the dinosaurs will escape and more problems will happen. So, okay, so that wasn't too bad. So I had that one. Okay, so this one damaged here, this one damaged here. Oh, actually it damages for everyone. Oh, but this one is only powering this pen. This one is only powering this pen. I believe it's only what, it only causes damage for what it is powering. Okay. Yes, damaging all the power, all the dinosaur pens to which it has power links. Okay, so I did plan that, all right. So this one here damaged both of these pens because it's powering both of these pens. This one generator is only damaging this pen here. This generator is only powering this pen, so it's only damaging this pen. While this one here is only powering the T-Rex, so it's only done damage to the T-Rex, okay. 
Shoo, I thought there might have been a chain reaction going on. But no, it's only damaging the pens that they're sending power to. Okay, got it. Now I'm going to claim some visitors. Do I have five facilities? I have one, two, three, four facilities. Not quite yet. Do I have a proto pen that is for... Oh, I need two. I need two proto pens. I forgot that, friends. So not yet. Both paths leading to the lake. They are not. So I think I'm going to abandon that. Um, do I have six rectangular pens? I only have one, two, three, four, five. I just drew a sixth pen, but they're not rectangular. So I do not have any of those objectives yet. Do I have 15 squares of pathway through the park? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I only have twelve. I might be comp completing that soon though, because I'm gonna draw some more pathways get myself another proto pen and go from there. So, okay. I think I did all the things. Yeah, the facilities count at the end of the game. So I'm not gonna be counting them right now. All right, oops. Those kind of jumped ship there. All right, five and two and a two. Wow, five, two, and two again. Okay. Okay, so. So this is something now that I know I want to make sure to increase my security because I don't want I don't want to cause any more damage to my park. So I will I will chuck that one of the twos and do this here. Give myself a little bit more. Did I add, okay, so I should have had, I think I have eight, two, four, nine. I should have nine threat, I think. So a proto is one, a Bronte is one, that's a total of two, a Steggy is one, that's a total of three, T-Rex is two, total of five, Velociraptor is a two, total of seven, and then a T-Rex is two total of nine okay making sure all right so i used i used my two to increase my security and now hmm oh i gotta draw my proto i'm going to draw a proto so i'm making sure i'm four away Let's draw, let's draw the proto here. Cause it's only three squares. And then do a one, two, three, four pips using that five. And then with my last two, I can draw the proto here. Oh gosh, that looks kind of like a llama. Ha! No, it's a protoceratops. Uh, it's a protoceratops. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, just kidding, friends. Okay, so I've got that. Uh, yep, so I used that five to draw my, my pathways over there. And I used all my dice. Okay, so currently at three threat. Ooh, plus five is an eight. Ouch. So every four, three, and two that's going to generate uh, power uh, is malfunctioning. Awesome sauce. So this one is a three power outlet, so that takes damage. So that's gonna damage here. Oof, and here on my Steggy. Oof, this one is a three because it's a T-Rex pen, so that takes damage. 
This one is a two, so it does take damage because it's a four, a three, or a two power outlet. Ugh, so my Veloc Velociraptor takes one, and my T-Rex takes one again. Oof, not good. I increased my security and everything. Jeez, all right, well, here we go. Uh, so do I have five facilities? No, I did not have enough dice this time, so I need to make sure I draw something for the rest of, to the end of the game, uh, to do that one. Uh, did I do protos? Yes, I did, because this one is one, two, three, four paths away. So, uh, proto we go. Proto we go. So claimed visitor, so that's 26 now on my claimed visitors. Alrighty, and yeah, so that one is a wash. Do I have 15 squares of the park marked? Um, I believe that also includes, I believe it also includes entrances. Um, I'm double checking, public objectives, do, do, do. Highly recommended. Make sure your claim is valid. Yeah, I think it includes pathways. Uh, counts as one path. Yes, it does. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, exactly fifteen. So that will be twelve for me on that public objective. So I'm gonna put that in the bonus here, and miscellaneous, I should say, adding to my research. Heading to sleep. All right, my friend, I hope you get some good sleep. Uh, my management is is slightly going downhill. I have taken some damage. So everywhere that you see an X here on my parks, my generators have malfunctioned and damaged some of my dino pens. But, you know, yes, we are holding on to our butts. Like Samuel Jackson says in Jurassic Park, we are holding on to our butts. Um, yeah, so I think it's been pretty good. Basically, Jurassic Park the game. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right, my friend. Uh, I hope you get some good rest. And uh, thank you for stopping by. If you are interested in playing this later on, feel free to do so. Because um, I have the link to playing the remote sheets and stuff on there. And these are just the objectives that I chose for for this mode, but if you have the physical game, then you know. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will redeem the hydrate. Sparkling water to the rescue. Uh, yeah, so, alrighty friends, let's see, can we do this last one? We have a four. A six and a one. Okay, four, six, and one. Four, six, and one. All right, here we go. So I have claimed, I think I've claimed basically everything I can. So the question is, um, I can build another I can build another T-Rex pen. Ooh, okay. Oh, but I don't know if I can now because that won't allow me to count those points there. Or, if I have those visitor cards, I think, 
Let's see. Uh, we complete their actions. Okay. Some visitor cards. Oh, the visitor card requirements only need to be met at the time that it is claimed. If a player subsequently changes their park so that the requirement is no longer met, they do not lose their card. Okay, that's good to know. So because I was thinking about drawing another entrance down here um, so I can draw another dino pen, but if I did that, it would negate this card, but the rules clearly state it only, uh, you claim the card when your park uh, has the valid requirements and then you claim those points and then if for whatever reason your park ends up being changed or modified so that they don't have those requirements anymore, uh, you still keep the card. You don't lose the card. So, okay, that's good to know. I am glad I checked that. So let us... Let us just draw, let us just draw, what do we think? What do we think? Another Brocky pen? Brachiosaurus pen? Um, yeah, let's do that. It'll be, it'll be a long, so it'll be a seven. Um, yeah, so I will combine these two to make a seven, a seven square, so it'll be like this. It'll be wrapped around the nice protosaurus, protoceratops. Some brocky pen over here. Gonna draw. Ooh, gotta see if I can draw it backwards. Ooh. Yeah, da, da, da. Yeah, da, da. Oh, it's got a Dun, 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 dun. That looks totally like a duck now. Goodness me. That's okay. It's a, bron a brontosaurus. There. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Okay. So I did that. I will draw my generator here. generator and it needs two so I'm gonna do a two here and draw a another park entrance there with my research action now I have a four I have a four to draw another uh, circle research I'll just put it over here because it's an empty square Oh, but I can't because it has to be next to a dino pen. I'm going to draw it actually up here next to the T-Rex pen. The damaged T-Rex pen. <laughs> okay, and that is all of the things that I can draw for this. Uh, checking malfunction. Oh, I did not add to my malfunction. So my Brocky gives me one more malfunction or threat, I mean, not malfunction, adds a threat to my threat tracker. So I'm currently at four threat. Uh, let's see, what does security, what does the malfunction rate is? Oh, it's at a six, holy smokes. So everything malfunctions. Ugh, why did I roll a six on my final turn? Why, 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 why? Okay, so this one damage, so everything. All power outlets of four, three, two, and one. So all of my generators are gonna malfunction. Oh no. Okay, so this malfunctions here. My stegosaurus malfunctions here. Uh oh, my T-Rex malfunctions. My Velociraptor malfunctions. Oh goodness me. And my T-Rex. Oh gosh. And my Bronte. I just drew you. I just drew you. Oh man, oh man. That was rough. My Velociraptors almost escaped. If they were a three square pen, they would have escaped. 
And if that would have happened, they would have damaged all of the pens surrounding it. So all of these pens that I had surrounding it. But thankfully, it is a four. See that little V? That is the box number four for my Velociraptor pen. Uh, wow, friends. That was close. Super close. Okay, so that's my malfunction. Uh, that's the malfunctioning. So, yeah, okay. Then five facilities. I do have five facilities now, so I will claim this last bonus. Uh, on my visitor card, so that's a total of 36 now. And I got that, and I don't have six rectangular pens. Um, so that's okay, I passed that one. All right, now we're going on to the scoring phase. So every proto pen I have will give me three points. I have two proto pens so that's a total of six here every comp 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 signathus pen i did not draw any compies this game so i have zero for that steggies give me four points so i have one stegosaurus pen for four every velociraptor gives me eight points wow that's pretty nice. I have one Velociraptor pen for eight. Every Brontosaurus gives me five. I have two Brontosaurus pens for 10. And every T-Rex pen gives me 10. And I have two T-Rex pens for 10. Yeah, I have a total, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dinosaurs total. One, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Dino total. Let's do some math here. Six and four is 10. Eight is 18. 28, 38. 38. Now my facilities, adding to my facilities here. Uh, so half of my threat level rounded down. So for every circle, I will get that same amount of points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So half of my threat is five points. So I will get five points for each circle facility. I have one, two, three circle facilities. So that's 15 points there, 15. And then what did I get for my, uh, Triangle facilities, gift shops, one square away uh, from an entrance gives me three points each, and I have two of those, so that's six. So six and 15 is 21. 21 total for my facilities there. Yeah, because each of them is one square away. All right, and then any unused generators, I get two points. I have to make sure I have one generator, two, three, four, five. I used five. Okay, so I have three unused, two points each. That's six. Every unused security box, I add the sum together. So that's seven and five is 12, plus four is 16, plus three is 19. So that's 19. Miscellaneous, that is from the public objective and from the research lab Z. So let's do some math here. So we got 21, 57, 63, uh, 69, 72, 82, 92, I believe. 92 and 38 is 130, I think. Let's see, let me double check on the uh, old calculator. So we've got six and four and eight and 20 and 21 and 36 and six, 19, 20. Ooh, 140, 140 I believe, 140. Let's go through one more time. 92, 140. 
Let's check that one more time. So we've got 20. Yep, 140 is my total score. Uh, so that's the score to beat, friends, if you are looking to play at home. Um, but this is Welcome to Dino World Danger Mode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Gus, for that. I think it was a nice score as well. Even though I missed a couple objectives. And like I said, we're playing at home. Uh, these, these visitor cards are usually first come, first serve. So I'm sure probably some of you that are playing at home would have achieved those goal cards sooner than I would have. Um, so that would adjust my score. But anyway, let's get down to doing some crisscross friends. I'm going to be right back, clear off the gaming table. And uh, then we can get to rolling some dice and matching some symbols. So hang tight, folks. Alrighty, friends, who is ready for some crisscross? We are going to be playing two games in our tournament as per usual. Um, and currently our high score is Rukas with 57 and then Gus and Yakmanda are tied at 47 apiece. So we are going to be playing every Wednesday in the month of June. And whoever has the high score will get a bag of swag from me and the CCG crew. So again, real quick, we are trying to match symbols here on our player sheets. Everyone will start off with a different, different starter symbol. I will get one and then the chat will get one to start us off. So here we go, chat. You will start with the triangle as your starter symbol. And I will get the single slash 
So write your starter symbol in the upper left hand corner and then we will go from there. Uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to roll these two dice. They've got six different symbols on them and you are going to try to match those symbols somewhere on your grid because the symbols that are next to each other that are uh, together in a row or in a column or both will score you points. Uh, the little uh, row, the little scoring sh uh, symbols on the right hand side of your screen will show you how many points. But uh, for those that are just listening at home, if you have two symbols that are together in a row or a column or both, that's two points. Three of them together is three. Four of them together is eight. And then all five of the same type of symbol in a row or a column will give you 10 points. Now, conversely, if you don't have any matching symbols in a row or a column, you will get minus points. We are playing the advanced mode variant here. So every one that you don't have will give you those minus points. And one more thing, this shaded area down here will be scored twice. So from the lower left to the upper right, and then back to from the upper right to the lower left. Same rules apply of matching symbols. So matching symbols here on the diagonal, as well as in your rows and in your columns there. We will be playing two games, keeping your highest scores that will roll over into next week. Um, but yes, currently the high score to beat is 57 there. So, all right. If anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Otherwise, here we go. All right, we've got an X and a triangle. It's our first set of symbols, X and triangle. And you do not have to draw your symbols directly next to what your starter symbol is, unless it's something that will give you the benefit of having them be matching. Um, but if they are, but you do have to remember that only symbols that are uh, next to each other orthogonally uh, or on this diagonal will be the ones that score you points there. <clears throat> starting off with an X and a triangle. All right, here we go. We have a single slash and a pound sign. Single slash and a pound sign. Oh, hey, Book of Nerds. Thank you so much for that feedback. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you have a good work day, my friend. Um, yeah, and I uh, look forward to uh, playing some cribbage with you online this weekend. So for those of you that don't know, um, a few of us are on More Games Please's Discord server, and we have started a cribbage tournament, and it's been a lot of fun to play um, on Board Game Arena against some friends um, from all over. So it's been a lot of fun to do that. So yeah, I've recently picked up Cribbage actually from watching Book of Nerds' stream. Um, I give a, a shout out to a shout out to him and have you all follow because they play uh, Cribbage on Saturdays. And from watching the stream, I was actually intrigued to learn cribbage because I've never played it personally and from there I learned how to play it and now I'm like totally obsessed <laughs> so 
Uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks for stopping by, friend. I, I appreciate it. All right, we got a slash and a triangle. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yes, uh, Book of Nerd says, awesome, I'm glad you're enjoying Cribbage. Yeah, it's it's funny. Um, I've been, after I learned how to play, um, I played it on BGA, and then I downloaded the Cribbage with Grandpa's phone app, and I had so much fun creating my own grandpas and playing on the difficulty levels and things like that, and the tournaments have been a lot of fun. Um I actually dug up a couple decks of playing cards that we haven't played <laughs> or haven't used in a really long time. So now my husband and I are playing like cribbage um, in person. So uh, yeah, so it's been fun. It's been a fun little adventure. All right, we've got a triangle and a single slash here. Now we've got an X and three lines. Ooh, okay. Yeah, X and three lines. So this week, uh, let you all know I'm going to be playing the fifth episode of Clank in Space Solo Adventure with the phone app from uh, Renegade Game Studios. I've been doing that the last several weeks and it's been a lot of fun. And so I believe this is the final episode of the solo campaign. Um, if you were watching last week, I got captured by... Lord Eradicus, and so I'm in a detainment cell right now, and so it's going to be interesting to see what this final chapter, final episode is going to be. Uh, so tune into that. That's this Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. GMT here on Twitch. Um, yeah, it's really cool. The app is free. There are um, other apps you can play. Uh, Clank, the base game as a solo game. I'm not sure if it's actual campaign or not, um, but you can do a solo game with the app. It gives you some narration on what to do after you take your turns and certain things to modify to the game itself when you're playing. Um, so that's been really a lot of fun to do. I've enjoyed it a lot, but this Clank in Space one is a campaign, so they do have kind of a little mini story to go through it. Um, yeah, it's been quite a blast. So tune in this Friday for that. Okay, we've got an X and an O. An X and an O. So we are going to be playing um, two games of this today and then we will sign off for the day. Um, but yeah, thank you all for hanging out and I uh, hope you enjoy what you're watching. Uh, Welcome to Dino World is one of those kind of in more intense uh Roll and write games, it's got a little more to it, a little more things to navigate and decisions to make. I enjoy it a lot, I hope you all do. And let me know if you end up playing on the VOD, I'm gonna drop my handles in here so you can um, let me know if you're not following me on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. Please let me know um, what your score was. Uh, see if you beat my score of 140 because I'd be curious, be curious to know. All right, ooh, a single slash and a single slash. That's very nice. Yeah, 
I would appreciate some more doubles, I think, in this game. That would give me a slightly better score, I believe. So yeah, it'll be it'll be quite quite the uh, the score if I can get that if I can get that going. Okie doke, can we get more doubles? We've got double circles. Wow, I think that's two for two, friends. Two for two. More doubles. Okay, Gus. I will see what I can do. Circle and triangle. Hmm. Well, that was okay. At least there was a circle. I'm getting some circles here on the diagonal now. And friends, after we do our second game, keep in mind who we should go over and raid. Um, got some fun streamers online today. So keep this fun going. Keep the fun going. See who we got online. A circle and a pound sign. Can I get five circles in a row? That is the question. Can I do it? Because if I can, then this will be interesting to uh, see what my score will be. But I don't know if that can happen. <laughs> Sometimes it's wishful thinking, but we can, we can hope for the best. Hope for the best. All right, circle and three lines. Got the perfect spot for it. 
a circle and three lines. Only a couple more rolls here in this game. If you are just joining, you feel free to uh, get yourself a piece of paper or download the crisscross page. I did put a link in the chat. Uh, we are going to be playing a second game of this to get yourself ready to match some symbols. Uh, yeah, our monthly tournament is underway, but that doesn't mean you still can't participate and jump in midway through. That's totally fine. We just keep our high scores to roll over to the following weeks. And then whoever has the high score at the end of each month will get a bag of swag. So yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun to do that for the last few months and and see people's smiles getting their getting their gear and all that stuff. So all right, what do we got here? A single slash and three lines. Hmm. Ooh, but do I want to have it be negative here? Darn it. Oh, I'm going to risk it. So I'm going to do single slash and three lines up here. Because I don't want to risk having minus points. I don't want to risk it. Although I might get minus points over here. <laughs> oh no, wait. No, I won't get minus points. Oh, silly me. I won't get minus points if I do here. There. There we go. <laughs> Anything and a circle. Okay. See what we can do for the final roll. Anything and a circle. Okie doke. Double slashes. Oh, wow. Well, there we go. Doubles to end it off. I think that's okay. <laughs> I think that's, that'll, that'll do. I think that'll do. All right. So let's add the rows here. So I've got a pair for two, another pair for two. Ooh, this is a minus five. That's three of a kind for three and two pairs for four. Going down, we've got three of a kind and a pair, so that's five. And just a pair here for two, a pair here for two, a pair here for two, and two pairs for four. Now we're going across four of a kind, that's eight. And this way, so eight and that's 10, 12, Minus five is seven, plus three is 10, plus four is 14, eight and five is 13, 15, 17, 19, 23. So all told 37 for my first one, even 30. Okay, so we've got 37 and 30 for today's games. Anyone else, feel free to let me know in the chat what your score is. And I will get my second player sheet ready. Here we go. It's ready now. <laughs> uh, yeah, 37. Man, I only had, wow, I only had a one minus five. That's all. Darn, I only, yeah, I only got pairs. I didn't get multiple pairs. That was kind of my demise, I guess, for doing that one. So here we go into game two, game two. Same rules and everything, trying to get beat your first score if you can.
Okie doke. So for the chat, your starter, starting with the three lines as your starter. And then for myself, I will get the pound sign. So for the chat, put your three lines in the upper left. And I will put the pound sign in the upper left. And here we go. Game two has us started. And we got double circles. That's nice. Let's do let's do double circles here. Oof, neither of those starters were rolled much last game. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes this time around. We shall see how it goes. But doubles is a good place to start, I feel. Doubles is a good place to start. All right, a pound sign and single slash. That completes that row. Okie doke. Next, we've got a circle and an X. Circle and an X. If they keep rolling these same four symbols, I might be in good shape. <laughs> oh, might be in good shape there. Here we go. A triangle and a pound sign. Triangle and a pound sign. Okie doke. An X and three lines. Hmm, my pears are, my pears are starting just to not add up very well. I only have just a couple pears here. Just a couple pears.
Okie doke. A pound sign and a triangle again. The same, if the same two symbols can be rolled for the rest of the game, that wouldn't be a problem either. <laughs> we can just get triangle pound sign the rest of the game, that's great. Or if we can get doubles, that's great too. Cut off a square, can't do a full grid this time. Oh no, Gus. Oh, bummer. That's also can happen too, friends. So if you end up, you know, drawing some stuff where you can't draw a symbol because they have to be orthogonally adjacent to one another, then you don't get any minus points. You just don't get any additional points if you had any matching symbols. It would kind of break. So like, let's say if I filled in the rest of these but then left this square empty, then uh, I would only score just the two points for the row. I wouldn't get anything else for any other symbols drawn there. So, yeah. Oopsie. <laughs> that happens. That can happen. All right. Triangle and single slash. Oops. That was a triangle, friends. There we go. All right, only a few more rolls, so we count them up for this time around. X and a pound sign. What to do, choices to make here. All right, pound sign and three lines. Ooh, that's a good spot for it. That's a good spot for it. All right, what do we got next? Can I get some triangles in here? Get some triangles? No, we get a single slash and an X. Oh, good grief, okay. Oh, that's not helpful. <laughs> oh no! Man, this sometimes the dice just roll into your favor and then other times they don't. So yeah, I could I could see how this is uh 
This can go really well or really poorly. <laughs> oh man, but it's a good game. I, I enjoy it and I enjoy playing with all of you. So, all right, let's see, two more rolls here. We've got a triangle and three lines. So now if I get, ooh, another triangle would be nice, or an X and a pound sign, actually. X and a pound sign, that way I can get this filled in and get some matching symbols there. That would be helpful. I don't think I'm going to break my score of 37 for this time around. Definitely not going to reach 57. That is definitely not going to happen this time. Um, yeah. And so you all know, this is this is a, a friendly tournament. Um, if I end up being the top winner, which has not happened yet, uh, I will give the uh, bag of swag to whoever comes in second place. So currently that is not the case for me. I have a score of 37 as my high score for this month. So yeah, uh, but yeah, the... High score goes will be um, awarded the bag of swag from me and the CCG crew. So feel free if you're just jumping in and you're like, what is happening? We play crisscross at the end of all of my Wednesday streams. Um, and we take a score for every week. And then at the end of each month, we, we uh, see who has the high score to get the, to be claimed the winner and get a bag of swag. So, ooh, double three lines. Okay, I mean, that's a double there, so it will give us some points regardless. So I'm not too, I'm not too upset about that. <laughs> not too upset. All right, here we go. Adding up two pairs for four, another pair for two, three of a kind for three, a pair for two, and two pairs for four. Going down this column, I've got a pair for two, two pairs for four, another two pairs, another two pairs, and three of a kind. Then going across, got two pairs on the diagonal. So we've got eight, 10, 13, 15, 19, six, 10, 14, 18, 21 so that's a total of 40 ah slightly better than my first game yeah there we go six and 18 yeah 40 that time so currently i still am in fourth place with 40 points gus how did you do today did you uh Beat your score of 47, or are you still holding on to that 47 as your high score for this month? Let me know in the chat. And I will go back up to the top view here. 22, oh boy, you had a lot of empty squares. Well, that's all right. I will keep your score of 47 here in the running uh, with the Akmanda, and then Rukas is still holding strong at 57 so far. So yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out with me today and playing some Welcome to Dino World and some crisscross. Cross. It has been a pleasure. Uh, let's see who we got online right now. Looks like Heart Board Games is playing. Heart Board Games is doing some, oh, playing online with the chat. Looks like they're doing some board game arena. Uh, let's give them, let's give them a raid. I haven't seen them, um, have not raided over to them. So let's go ahead and do that. Thank you all for hanging out with me. And it has been such a joy to see you, all your lovely faces in the chat. 
and uh yeah we'll see hope to see you all on friday for some clank in space digital the final episode uh see if i can uh get out of the detention cell lord eradicus's detention cell if that could happen um but we shall see so tune in on friday 3 p.m pacific 11 p.m gmt right here on twitch to catch all the action but until next time have fun uh see you at on friday yeah sounds good <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying i think i i think i need to go see what soma's up to right now <laughs> anyway take care folks see you next time